I'll just bring you another video of the Mazak mission. I'll just show you a couple of things on the bench first and then we'll just work our way over to um, the manual mill. Just show you my setup to uh, cut a gear using the rotary table just to finish off the video. So probably to start off, I'll just bring in the gear that I've got to cut. Uh, this actually mounts on the indexing um, actuator that I'll show you shortly, which was disassembled in the previous video. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of teeth missing out of the side there. So this is the gear I've got to cut here. So it's a 20 tooth gear. And this sets into this larger gear here. So this drives the actual um, turret into position. So when you're indexing the turret itself, so this drives the actual turret itself. So I'll just take you know, a bit of light coming in from the window again. So as you can see, we've got the, the actuator back in one piece, which was in that, in that last video, had it uh, disassembled all over the bench everywhere. That gear actually goes on the side of that shaft there. Not that it really matters, but just sit on here to show you where it goes. So that just sits on there. So that's, as I say, that's the gear, uh, the next gear I've got to make. Um, got it all back in one piece. The probably paintwork's not up to really my standard, but it is tucked away uh, inside the actual um, housing that I showed you in the previous video. I was just showing the, where I'll be modifying the lube lines and and so on in the in the previous video. Uh, it was good at um, able to reassemble it without having any bolts left over, which is always a bit of a bonus. Um, probably not much really to show you show you on that. It's, it's a fairly straightforward actuator. Um, pressure in, pressure out. Or whichever whichever side, obviously one or the other. Um, so it just drives the unit. And just bring you back to this unit again. So this is part of that drive unit as well. So this um, drum or cylinder, whichever way you want to, whichever way you want to call it, this unit actually pressurises first. So when you see a CNC lathe doing a tool change, this unit pressurises first, which actually drives the turret out, and then it can index. So this is the actual unit that does that. So the shaft actually pushes out and able to let the turret to index. So that's, that's what this actual unit does. Obviously hydraulically driven. And a few other bits and pieces here, which will make a bit more sense. So this is another part that bolts inside the uh, inside that housing as well. Just one other thing while I've got you as well. Um, so sort of sitting in the background that I've just recently cleaned up was the uh, the keypad for the, um, the front of the controller was able to clean up fairly well I was looking at maybe buying another one but I was able to clean that pretty well pretty much like brand new now so I'm pretty happy with that uh, it's all in very good condition there's nothing really worn off it uh, it's all come uh, come up looking very nice actually so I keep I just leave it on the bench so I can keep looking at it <laughs> but not to waste too much time I'll just take you over to the actual um over to the mill now just grab that gear off there and I'll, I'll take you over and just show you the setup on the on the manual mill now Nothing too big deal here. I mean, most of you guys have watched videos on, on YouTube of gear cutting, but just I, I just choose to use a um, a rotary table rather than the indexing head. Same same principle as you can see. I've got the um, the cutter set up and um, the actual blank sitting there ready to go. I'll just take you out, just go for a quick bit of a demo. As I say, it might be helpful for for um, someone's maybe cutting gears and a bit concerned about how to approach it possibly. The thing is probably about gear cutting is the worry of getting the sink right and I think there's a, probably a couple of ways to make sure you're going to do it right and probably a couple of things you could probably do to just to check is before you cut your first gear is you can probably just you can either blue up or use your sharpie and just mark around this and go and do a scratch cut all the way around just to make sure you're in sync and probably to get your sink of the how to divide the gears up is just fairly straightforward obviously it's 360 degrees in a circle and just a number of teeth divided into into that. In, in this case, it's 20 teeth, so we're, we're running at 18 degrees. And what I've done is I've put little um, sharpie marks on there of uh, where it actually is, just to, just so I don't lose track of where I am. They're just coarse marks that I just mark on there and wipe off at the end. And just a la your sort of indexing head, same same type of thing. So around around to zero, so it's preset running in the right direction. So obviously we're counting up, not counting down. And it just moves around to each position. So if you're familiar with rotary tables, you understand how that works. So working our way around, as I say, probably didn't need to show you any of this, but it just, as I say, it might be helpful for someone who's probably uh, for a bit of information. So you can probably see up where it's reading up to this point here, which is actually one degree. So each rotation of this wheel is um, uh, four degrees. 
So that's where you get that 90 to 1 uh, reduction with the uh, rotary tables. So it's obviously four divided, four, uh, 360 degrees divided by uh, 90 is, um, is four degrees. Uh, so each each rotation of each full rotation of that is is um, four degrees. As I say, so just don't be too worried about it. If you are thinking about cutting gears, don't be. It's more so just getting out there. And I mean, the way you can look at it, you can. The worst thing you can do is stuff it up. So if you stuff it up, just you'll have to just make another blank. Or maybe a good thing is just maybe maybe make up a couple of blanks to to allow for allow for errors. So if you've got some spare ones left there, you'll you'll do it right. If you've got no spare ones there, you can pretty much guarantee you'll make a mess of it. But yeah, don't be. As I say, don't be too worried about approaching uh, gear cutting. Is probably more so getting your uh, the cutter more so right than than anything else as I say to approach it you can go around and do a little scratch and make sure you come back around to zero again is probably your biggest concern and just getting your math right with the with how many teeth you've got to cut as I say it's, it's fairly basic maths but obviously that'll vary from the amount of the amount of teeth you need to cut in this one it's 20 so it's an even number and it's just um, 20 20 dividing into 360 so that just divides in uh, 18 you know back down to 18 degrees so it's a fairly easy fairly easy math to do um, the material i'll be using is um, en 36a so that's a, a case hardened steel so these now uh, this gear will be case hardened after it's finished so basically the whole uh, other than what they've done with the mazak one which is uh, induction hardened which only hardens the teeth itself and leaves the core soft uh, this one will be uh, case hardened right, right over. It's just the way that the heat treater guys just prefer to do it. They don't want to muck around just induction hardening one gear. It's too much stuffing around, they said. So that's just the only thing. So this will be hardened after after I finish here. So that's the only thing I, I've got to do now. So just get this gear cut and then get over the heat treatment. I don't think there's probably anything else I can probably show you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's more so just how to approach it more so as I say there's a bit of a combination of just showing you a bit of a Mazak mission and how to approach gear cutting more so I'm not, as I say, I'm not going to just run it into a whole maybe 30 minute video of gear cutting I probably don't need to approach that too much most of you guys who, who watch YouTube can, can pretty much find out it's probably just more so just getting your confidence enough to approach the job more so um, as far as, um, as getting the depth right you can do your math through um, most of these online calculators things like that to get depth of cut but all I've done is just going to match up the depth of the cut into these gears here so whatever the depth is here I'm just matching over onto my blank so that's probably not a, a major thing and there is a bit of adjustment uh, to engage this smaller gear to that larger gear there is slight bit of adjustment with that plate that was sitting on the bench you can move it uh, from left to right slightly you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking like millimetres, I'm talking like small amounts, you know, as much as the clearance there is in a bolt hole. Um, so it, there is a slight bit of adjustment so you can set up your backlash in there to make sure your gears are meshing. That's probably the biggest concern with gear cutting is making sure your gears are engaged correctly. That's probably the, the main concern is you don't have either too much or too much too much free play or backlash in your gears. Is obviously, if you have too much, it's going to at some point start to wear the gears and give you free play. But other than that, it's probably as much as I could probably show you in this video. I can't really think of anything else I'd probably want to include in here to sort of whip through this one fairly quick. Keep this one fairly short. There wasn't really a lot to I could show you. Just a bit of an update where I am and slowly get this turret back together so I get this gear cut now and then um, that'll do. I look forward to seeing you guys back on this one. Okay, bye for now.